you may not know what P22B is, and yet, if you are of a certain age, you spend hours and hours staring at it. Don't believe me? Let me first introduce you to the P notation. The P notation is a standardization of phosphorescent materials for cathode ray tubes. P1, or willemite, is the first phosphorescent material to have been standardized. It is actually a naturally occurring mineral that can act as a green phosphorescent material, but it can also be made synthetically. Subsequently standardized phosphors have been given increasing P numbers, and P22 is a phosphor used in cathode ray tubes for color television. Of course, color CRTs do not contain a single phosphorescent material, a fact that can be easily observed by watching an old TV very closely. When the screen is turned off, vertical color red stripes can be seen, and when it is turned on, again looking very closely, you can see groups of three dots, colored red, green and blue. Each of these dots is made of a different phosphor, which, looking back at the table, is called P22R, P22G and P22B. Today we are going to make P22B, the blue phosphor, which, according to the Inorganic Phosphorus book, is silver doped zinc sulfide. From my experience, I found out that making this material with an acceptable brightness and without dark spots was considerably more difficult than the green version I made previously, which was copper doped zinc sulfide. Eventually, I discovered that this was partly due to purity issues in the silver nitrate I used, and partly due to the need to add a small amount of pure sulfur before firing the phosphor. I already made two videos on the purification of sulfur and silver nitrate, which could be considered the hard part of the work. What remains in this video is a simple step-by-step -step procedure to carry out the final step. The procedure is also remarkably similar to the green phosphor synthesis. The first step is to weigh out 0.5 grams of pure zinc sulfide in a clean beaker. In my case, I am using 99.99% zinc sulfide that I bought from a chemical supplier. It is possible to synthesize it yourself, but the procedure is dangerous. I am pouring the desired amount by rotating the container instead of using a spatula so as not to introduce impurities in the container that may accumulate. After that, a few milliliters of water is added and the beaker is agitated. Zinc sulfide is actually not soluble in water, but the fine powder makes a slurry. The mixing of the host material and dopant is done in aqueous solution for two reasons. First, weighing out the required tiny amount of silver nitrate is almost impossible, while it is possible to make a solution of any concentration through dilution. Second, once the water is evaporated, the silver nitrate evenly coats the zinc sulfide powder with the dopant material. This is why it is not a good idea to just mix solid silver nitrate with solid zinc sulfide. A 3.8 millimolar solution of silver nitrate has been prepared beforehand. 0.5 milliliters of it is added to the zinc sulfide slurry. This will act as the dopant that will give us the blue color. The slurry is again quickly stirred. Next, 1 ml of 0.5 molar ammonium chloride flux is added. The solution is put on a hot plate at 100 degrees to evaporate all the water. When the mixture is dry, 0.15 grams of pure sulfur are weighted out and mixed in. This trick, found in the Inorganic Phosphorus book, improves the brightness of this phosphor. The mix is placed in a quartz tube, as glass, even borosilicate, could melt at the required temperatures. The quartz tube I am using was found on eBay, and it is degraded by several firings I have done before, but it is still very usable. Once the mix is in the tube, it needs to be fired, that is, heated at a temperature of over a thousand degrees in an inert atmosphere of argon or nitrogen gas. 
The inorganic phosphorus book suggests a thousand and a hundred degrees for an hour, but from my experience around six minutes of heating with a map gas torch is enough. Maybe the temperature I am reaching is higher. After it is let cool, the phosphor is now ready and can be removed from the tube. It is suggested to wash it with water to remove residues and to powderize eventual clumps. My camera unfortunately does not show the color correctly, in reality it is a deeper blue.